ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு அட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ அஸ் வி ஹாவ் டிஸ்கஸ்ட் ஆல்ரெடி வி ஹாவ் கம்ப்ளீட்டட் தி டே ஒன் ஆஃப் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் அண்ட் வி ஹாவ் வி சா அபவுட் தி டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃபேஸஸ் ஆஃப் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் அண்ட் வாட் டு வி டூ இன் ஈச் ஃபேஸ் ஆஃப் தி பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் ஸோ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஆர் இன் டே டூ we are going to see about the third phase which is the planning and the design so we are going to discuss about what are all the deliverables we are going to give and how are we going to plan or what are we going to deliver at the end of this phase the planning phase of performance testing so please do subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet like comment and share your feedback in the comment section so let's now go to the video so now we will see the examples and elaborations of the deliverables in the planning phase of performance testing so to start with the first one is the performance testing plan and the first one is going to be the objectives so the objectives of the performance testing project may vary depending on the system under test and the goals of the testing take for example if we are going to test a system which is a web application so what are the objectives so the objectives include verifying the application can handle a certain number of concurrent users and then it has to ensure that the response time is within acceptable limits and the last objective has to be identifying any scalability or any performance issues so the next pointer is scope so when it comes to scope it has to be clearly defined in the performance testing plan which includes what are the components of the system have to be tested such as the web server the application server the database server and what type of performance test will be conducted such as load testing or we are going to use a stress testing or endurance testing and what metrics will be measured such as response times or throughput or error rate so all these metrics and all these scope has to be documented in the document and the third pointer is the methodology so the methodology used for performance testing will depend on the objectives of the testing and the system under test so take for taking for example so the load testing may be used to simulate a large number of concurrent users on the other hand the stress testing may be used to test the system's ability to handle peak loads in the other way the endurance testing is used to test the system's performance over an extended period of time so the methodology has to be defined and it has to be documented before we start the testing and the fourth pointer is the test scenarios so the test scenarios should be defined to simulate the real or the realistic the real world environment the real world user behavior during the performance testing so when it comes to test scenarios when we take for an example if the system is an e-commerce application the test scenarios should include browsing products adding items to the cart and checking out so even in this example we are doing the same so we are browsing for products we are adding the items to the cart and we are checking out so the expected load the duration and other parameters of the scenario should also be defined as part of the test scenarios so we have to define the load we have to define the duration and we have to define any other parameters which are related to the performance testing and then when it comes to the test environment so the performance testing environment should be set up to simulate the production environment as closely as possible so we have discussed this in several parts of our video during our several videos before that the performance testing environment should be as close as possible to the production environment and this includes the hardware the software and the network infrastructure and for example if the system is hosted on a specific operating system the testing environment should use the same operating system 
So when it comes to, for example, if you are using a Linux environment where you host your application, so the same operating system, the Linux operating system should be used in the testing environment. And that will be like an apple to apple comparison when you're doing a testing. So when it comes to the tools, the tools and technologies used for performance testing should be identified and include in the performance testing plan. So for example, the load testing software such as JMeter. So in our example, we are using the JMeter or in case if you are using a load runner, so that might be used, which you use to simulate the user behavior and performance monitoring tools such as Nagios or Neuralink may be used to monitor the system under test. So all these things has to be documented and you have to document your tools and everything. And then when it comes to the timeline, the timeline for the performance testing project should be very clearly defined, including the start, the end dates, the testing milestones, and any dependencies or constraints. For example, if the testing needs to be completed before a product launch, the testing timeline should reflect that. You must not wait or you must not keep your timelines after the product launch and it's, it's of no use. So your timelines has to be perfectly documented and you have to plan accordingly and it has to be before a product launch or whatever dates before the production release date shortly. So now when we look about the test strategy document, so the second deliverable is a test strategy document. So what does the test strategy document consists of? So the test strategy document contains the first one is the test type. So we all know the types of performance tests to be conducted and that should be defined in the test strategy document. So when it comes to types, so if so the load testing are the major or the primary testing that we do and that load testing may be used to test the system's ability to handle a certain number of concurrent users and we all know like the stress testing which we use to test the system's ability to handle peak loads and the volume testing is used to test the system's performance with a large amount of data. So first we have defined the test types in the test strategy document and when it comes to the test approach, the second point of the test approach. So the approach for each type of test should be defined in the test strategy document. For example, the load profiles and that load profile should include the ramp up, the ramp down and the steady state. And in fact, it should contain the test scenarios and the testing methodologies should also be defined for load testing. Similarly, the approach for stress testing should include the peak load levels and duration of the test. So the test approach will differ for each of the load tests. Like I mentioned, the load testing should have ramp up, steady state and ramp down. And the stress test should include the peak load levels and the duration of the test. And when it comes to the performance metrics, so the performance metrics to be measured during the test should be, should be defined in the test strategy document. For example, the response times, the throughput, the error rate and resource utilization may be included as performance metrics. And all these things has to be perfectly documented in the test strategy document. And then when we come to the test data, so the test data to be used during the testing should be defined in the test strategy document. For example, the user data, the input data, and any of the test configurations may be included as test data. So all these things has to be documented in the test strategy document. And when it comes to the environment and infrastructure, so the testing environment and infrastructure should be defined in the test strategy document. And this includes the hardware, the software and network setup. So now we will see some of the important questions and answers which we have to have during the planning phase. So the first question goes like this. So how do we determine the objective of the performance testing project? So this is the question like how do we how do we determine the objective of a performance testing project? So the objectives of the performance testing project should be determined based on the goals of the project and the needs of the system under test. Take for example, if the goal of the project is to launch a new e-commerce website, the performance testing objective may include 
verifying that the website can handle a certain number of concurrent users or ensuring that the response time is within acceptable limits or identifying any scalability or performance issues. And in fact, it's very important to work with stakeholders to identify the key objectives of the performance testing project. So this is a primary question which every performance tester should have before he starts the planning. And then when it comes to the second question, so what type of performance test should be included in the performance testing plan? Because most of us will have that doubt or the question, like what type of performance test should I do? Should I go with load test or should I go with stress test or what? So we will see that. So the types of performance tests that should be included in the performance testing planning depend on the system under test and objectives of testing. So we all know some of the common types like the load test or the stress test or the endurance test and the volume test. So and we all know like load testing is used to test the system's ability to handle a certain number of concurrent users and stress testing is used to test the system's ability to handle peak loads and endurance testing to test the system's performance over an extended period of time and volume testing is used to test the system's performance with a large amount of data. So in this video, I, I'm again and again and again talking about these types to make sure that we all understand the objectives of their testing, like the types of performance testing. Okay, so let's now go to the third question. So here when we talk about, so what should be included in the test scenario? So we are working on the test scenario. So what should be included or which should be excluded? So when it comes to including and excluding, so the test scenarios of performance testing should simulate the realistic user behavior in the system under test. Take for example, if the system is an e-commerce website, the test scenarios may include browsing products, adding items to the cart and checking out. The expected load, the duration and other parameters of each scenario should be defined and it's very important to include a range of scenarios that cover different types of user behaviors and load levels and that's the reason we have different types of scenarios while we were planning the testing. So how should the performance testing environment be set up? So when it comes to the performance testing, so how should we set up like the performance testing environment should be set up to simulate the production environment as closely as possible. So that is the ultimate answer for any type of question. Like even you ask any number of times, the answer has to be the testing environment should be set up to simulate the production environment as closely as possible. And it has to be stable and reliable so that the results of the testing are accurate and meaningful. So finally, again, we, we can say like what tools and technologies should be used for testing. So some common tools for load testing, we use JMeter or we use LoadRunner and for performance monitoring, we use Nagios or Neuralink. And for profiling, we use Yorkit or Visual VM. In fact, we will see about Yorkit and Visual VM in our future videos. And it's very important to choose tools and technologies that are appropriate for the testing objectives and that can provide the necessary insights into the performance of system under test. So it's, it's very important that to choose the appropriate tool. Otherwise, there is no use of using any tool without knowing the objective or the appropriation of using it. So the objective is very important and we have to choose the appropriate tool for testing. So with that, we come to an end. Tomorrow we'll discuss about the phase four, the day three. On day three, we'll discuss about the phase four, which is configuring the test environment. And that is going to be very, very interesting and you will really enjoy the video. So for now, I'm taking a break. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from Vasanth Shanmugam and Little Slaw.